Now we're going to apply our trig exercises to real practical problems. We've got the airplane diagram here, and this is exercise 33. Let's replace this picture with this one, a little simplified version. Now we're going to use a trig function. I'm not going to tell you which one, but that's what you're supposed to figure out. I can see here, relative to my given angle, 31 degrees, that's the angle of incline here. This would be the adjacent side. This 19 would be the opposite side. And the y, what we're looking for, is the hypotenuse. Now it's clear here we have no information about the blue. So this goes away. We don't care about that. We have opposite known hypotenuse that we're seeking. So look at your acronym, your SOCATOA. And clearly, this is what we're looking for, opposite over hypotenuse. That tells us we're going to use a sine function. So let's get to it. Right there is our setup. And we've been doing this long enough. We can rearrange a little bit of algebra, hocus pocus, and there it is. And we'll do this one on the calculator. Pull up the calculator. And again, 19, we're going to divide by the sine of 31, there's the 31. We notice the division degrees, check, check, and we hit sine. The sine of 31, about a half, that makes sense. I divide by a half, I'm effectively doubling. 36.8 to the nearest whole feet. And uh, if you answered it to the nearest tenth, 36.9, or if you answered to the nearest whole, 37 feet would be the length of the ramp on the incline. Well, let's find the length of the bleachers here. And again, we have a diagram replace, while well, replacing the book's picture with our own diagram. We have a 27 degree angle here. We have a known side H, odd choice of variable, but H for the blue and 18 for this length. We fill in the sides. This is the hypotenuse of the triangle. The opposite side is unknown and the adjacent is what we're looking for. Remember, what your, you know, your goal is to decide which trig function to use. Let's say we don't need the opposite side. All I want to do is relate adjacent to hypotenuse. That is a job for cosine. So we can set this up now. As we all know that the cosine of 27 degrees is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, h over 18 in this case. Now, the variables in the numerator multiply both sides of the equation by 18. And at the same time, I'm going to use my symmetric property, put my variable on the left. And we could pull up our calculator right now, and let's clear that out. And it's 18 times cosine of 27. This time I'll put in 27, hit the cosine, 0.89. Good mental check, it's less than 1. And I'll multiply times 18. To the nearest, well, it looks like to the nearest whole foot, that looks like 16. So 16 feet for this distance. Now we'll finish this film with a word problem that has no picture because you are going to supply it. That's part A. Exercise 35, we are going to draw a diagram of this kite. There it goes. We're looking for this height and I'm holding, or the spool of the kite is right here, 20, uh, 41 degrees off the horizon with 20 feet of straight line. And this would be, this is not realistic. This is an approximation. You all know it would be a catenary or curved shape, but we're going to, well, we're just going to say it's straight, like a guy wire on a tower. So now let's set up our trig. Opposite the 41 degrees is the H, the adjacent is here, the hypotenuse is here. We know our SOCATOA. Look at this, adjacent, eh, we don't want that. So we have opposite over hypotenuse. That tells us we're using the sine function. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's set that up. The sine of 41 is H over 20. And we're going to rearrange this. 20 times the sine of 41. 
And let's see, pull up our calculator. Oops, we got something on there. We'll say 41 sine. That's the sine of 41. That looks good. Times 20. 13.1211. You can read all those digits, but we are flying a kite after all. We'll go to the nearest whole foot. So we're looking at about 13 feet. Now, let's add just a little bit more realism to our situation here. And part B. That spool, you're not holding it on the ground. You're going to be holding it in the air. So the drawing might look a little more like this. You're standing here. This is five feet in the air. This is the height we calculated, but this five is going to be additive. So the height of the kite relative to the surface of the earth is going to be h plus five, or in other words, 18 feet.